everyone, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make music like Maya Jane Cole's. As usual, you get the project file and samples in the description, either on my Bandcamp or on my Patreon, if you're a patron. And yeah, let's dive in. So, I have this thing here, you heard it in the intro. The first layer we have is this operator hi-hat that I made, which sounds like this. So this is just a pretty straightforward, kind of like, hi-hat sound. Um, I made it with operator. Like I said, um, it's just some white noise going into a bandpass filter, and then the bandpass filter is what's kind of shaping it. So here's without the filter. And then with. So you can hear it just essentially is like honing in on that one sort of area where the hi-hat kind of sound happens. And then to shape it, I just use the envelope on, on the white noise. And yeah, pretty straightforward. It's like a nice kind of like simple similar to the kind of ones that I heard in a lot of Maya's tracks like she doesn't usually use like big open hi-hats or anything it's usually like kind of smaller ones like this so yeah um and then the next thing we have here is this little rim slash clap thing which sounds like this now the reason why I'm playing these together is because they're kind of meant to be played together um essentially we have this rim shot and then this clap and you can hear like they're doing they're doing two very different things. The rim is more of like the quick, cracky kind of like snare sound, and then the clap is adding more of that kind of like soft, like sort of extra sound to it, I guess. That makes it not just like a rim shot, you know. Like it's kind of just adding that extra little bit of, I guess, like clappiness to it. Um. But I thought this was nice, and this is something I definitely hear in Maya's tracks a lot as well. Um, it sounds like she uses a lot of like rim shots combined with claps to make these kind of softer rim shot clap snare things. Um, so then the next thing I will show you is this extra percussion, um, which sounds like this. So what we have going on here is I have a closed hi-hat and then sort of two percussion sounds. Um, so the closed hi-hat is just playing sort of with the open one. I'll show you. Here's what it sounds like with the open one. So like I said, it's just playing off of it. It's playing like the 16 notes, but it's not doing just like 16 notes the whole time. Like, it's not like this. Um, and that's something important that I wanted to talk about as well. I think, like, as far as her drum programming, Maya Jane Cole doesn't really do that a whole lot. Like, she usually does patterns kind of like this. Where it's sort of like playing off of the hi-hat, but not, you know, not just fully like playing 16 notes the whole time. So that was kind of the purpose of that. And then same thing with the percussions. Like I'll show you, I'll play you just all the drums together. Like you're really just trying to make it all play off of each other. I think this is something that she does really well is like writing the drum patterns to kind of like play off of each other. So yeah, definitely pretty important there. So like... You can kind of hear what's going on with the percussion there. And if I get rid of it, and if I get rid of the close I had as well, you can hear it doesn't quite have that same groove. Like, these drums really help to just make everything sort of play off of each other. Um, so then the next thing we have here is this kick, which sounds like this. And yeah, there's really nothing too crazy there. It's just a nice kick sample. Um, you can see I have no processing on it. It's pretty clean. Um, it's just about finding like a good kick in this case. Like anything that kind of sounds like this, like very analog and not like you know not like a super hard hitting like EDM kick or something like that. Just something kind of with a softer transient and smoother like this tends to work pretty well. Um, so then the next thing we have here is this bass, which sounds like this. So this is a pretty straightforward bass. You can hear it's just playing this kind of cool bass line. Um, basically what I have here is I have a square wave. And that's going into a low pass filter. And the low pass filter has this envelope on it. So that's what's giving it kind of like the movement. If I turn that off. Or if we turn the filter off. There's a the square wave. And then there's the filter. And if we turn the envelope off you can see. Yeah it's just a straightforward square wave. A low pass filter, but the envelope just gives it a little bit more of like a pluck. 
So then after that, I have the saturator, which as you can see is actually very, very subtle. Um, I was mostly using this to get that kind of like analog clip type of sound as opposed to like straight up drive with the, uh, yeah, with the distortion there. So I just kind of turned the bass on the analog clip up a bit and the drive a little bit. And you can hear it just kind of beefs it up a little. It's very subtle, but the subtleties are what make the big differences, I guess. Um, so then after that, I just have a side chain to the kick. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward. The thing I will say is, like, if you want that kind of, like, Maya Jane Cole's bass type of sound, using sounds like this really helps. Like, anything that's just sort of, you know, just like a smaller, tighter kind of, like, bass stab, as opposed to, like, some super long reese bass or, like, some kind of big bass, I guess, that would take up the whole mix. Just something really small and tight like this definitely gets the job done. Um, so then the next thing we have here is this piano, which sounds like this. So, I made this with Ableton's Grand Piano, actually. Um, you can see, there's the rack. And as far as the notes go, it's pretty straightforward. It's following the chord progression from the bass. And then what we have is we have pretty straightforward chords. But I've added some extra notes on top. So, if I put these down, you can see, these are just basic chords. Um, you can see, like, those are just, we just have the root, and then the third, and then the fifth. And then I added these voices on top. So if I put these down, yeah, you can kind of see that these are just sort of like extra melody notes on top of the chords. They all fit in there, and then I just kind of span it out over the octaves. Here's without spanning it out. And then here's with. So you can hear it helps a lot. It allows like the voices to kind of shine, especially those high voices which are adding a lot to these chords. If I play it without those... Yeah, not quite as cool. So since those are in there, and we want them to really shine through, I put them on top. And yeah, it's just a matter of like spreading out your chords over the keyboard um, to make it work. So for the sound here, like I said, I just used Ableton's Grand Piano. And then what I did was I put it into this EQ8. And this EQ8, it's basically a bandpass filter. Um, the reason why I use an EQ instead of just like an auto filter is because it's a little bit easier when you're doing a bandpass to work with an EQ since you can like kind of shape it to your own needs. Like you can see here I have like this sort of uneven bump there. Whereas if I just use like an auto filter, you can see, yeah, so we don't have as much control even if I switch it to 12 dB. Still not like a lot of control, so it's just easier for me to work with the EQ for bandpass filters. Um, so yeah, so I have that on there for a specific reason. And this reason is to make it sound more sampled. Here's without the EQ. And then here's with. So for one, the Ableton Grand Piano doesn't always sound the best. So that's another good reason <laughs> for using this EQ. But this is something I want to talk about. So in Maya's music, I've heard a lot of like kind of sampled piano sounds and like organs and like just all these different kinds of sounds that are like probably sampled. I don't think that a lot of them are like, you know, they sound like they're sampled. Um, But for here, I wanted to do everything with MIDI. So to get around this, like I said, I just used this piano and then putting it through this EQ8 gives it that kind of sampled feel as well as also like, again, this isn't the best sounding piano. So it's a good way to kind of mask that. Um. So yeah, so then after that, I have this reverb, which is set like this. I turned off all the different, like, processing things, like the chorus and the diffusion and the reflections, or the early reflections, and then the input processing. And it's just kind of like a clean, simple reverb. The dry wet is set there, and the K-time is set there. Again, it just adds to the sampled feel. If I turn it off... You know, it just adds that little extra bit of kind of like space in the sound. Um, so then after that, I just have a side chain to the kick, like the bass. And yeah, pretty straightforward there. Again, with the piano, you know, you just want to keep it simple. Like, I'm not playing these super complex patterns. It just kind of hits these chords rhythmically on the beat, and then they ring out. And that's kind of it. Um, so then the next thing we have here is this analog, which sounds like this.
So this is just like a pad that's playing in the background. Um, the way that I made this was, first off, we are just playing, and this is just the first chord that I had. So it's that D sharp minor with the extra D sharp on top. Um, and then what I did was basically an analog. I have one saw wave. It's going into a bandpass filter, which is set like this. I have no envelope on there, but I have LFO 1 on there very slightly, and you may have heard that. You can hear the pad is kind of like opening and closing. If I turn off this LFO, you see that goes away. So this LFO is just on here, and it's moving the filter slightly. You don't want to do it too much, um, but if you've seen my videos before, you know that I do this quite a bit. What it's doing is it's just giving it like that slight bit of movement throughout the track, um, and it keeps it like interesting. Because if you just have this pad, it's kind of boring just playing in the background. But when you add some movement to it, you know it makes it feel like it's sort of like moving and breathing a little bit more, and it sort of brings it to life. And especially if you start doing this on like multiple elements in your track you'll really have uh something cool there so like i said i just put this lfo on there it's moving pretty slow and it gives it some movement so then after that i have the amp envelope set like this just the default um and then that's going into this chorus which is set like this so i didn't use too much um well I actually used quite a bit <laughs> But you can see the amount is set there and the dry wet is set there. But then the rate is kind of slow. So that's the key to this song. Because if you have a fast rate, it becomes a little bit too obviously chorus. And I didn't think it sounded cool. But if we put the rate down, then yeah, like it still gives it that width and that depth that the chorus gives. But without like that sort of weird like warbling that just sounds odd. Um, so yeah, so that's the chorus, and then after that, I just have a side chain to the kick, and then I have an EQ8 on here cutting out some low end. You can see, it's not really doing too much, but that filter does, especially since it's only doing 12 decibels of attenuation, um, it does let through a little bit of stuff, so I figured I'd just cut out the low end and make it clean. And yeah, so then the last layer I have here is this lead, which sounds like this. And I wanted to include this because I thought it was a cool lead. Um, I think it fits the style pretty well. It sounds like something Maya Jane Coles would use in her tracks. Um, but this would also kind of work without it as well, I feel like. Maybe with like a vocal sample or something. But yeah, so for this lead, I made it with Operator. Um, and what we're doing with the notes here is you can see, I just have these kind of like somewhat complex patterns. These might seem super complex, but they're really not. Well, they're not super complex, but they might seem more difficult to make than they are. Like, the key here is just, well, staying in key. But the way that I wrote this was basically just listening to the piano. Um, so, like, I feel like I wanted to talk about this because I feel like a lot of people, you know, like, when you write leads and melodies and stuff for your first times or when you're first learning, a lot of times people just kind of write the melody and then play it with the track. But... Writing this with the piano gave me a lot of sort of almost more freedom to be creative because, like, it's harder to go out of tune if you're listening to the piano since it will, you know, it will guide you. Like, if you play a note that's out of tune, like if I do this. You can hear that sticks out like a sore thumb. So it's going to make you essentially just write better parts because yeah you're gonna be like more able to um because of hearing the piano chords at the same time so that was kind of what i did here um and yeah and th like i said this isn't really a difficult thing to do but it is a cool lead so then for the synth sound on here all i have is a saw wave an operator going into this low pass filter which has an envelope on it that's what gives it the kind of like plucked sound. Um, and then that's going into this echo, which is set to eighth notes. And it's not an eighth note, so like straight eighth notes will be like this. Like dun 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 dun. But then the dotted eighth notes gives it kind of like this slightly off feel. Um, but I feel like this is cool. It gives it more of an interesting stereo image. 
and the echo feels like very analog. Um, so then I have a pretty low dry wet on that, you can see. Didn't want to go too crazy, because it can really get in the way, especially when you have a very rhythmic lead like this, where it's like doing these 16th notes. You want it to be you want to be able to essentially discern the echoes from like the original thing. And if I turn this dry wet up, you can see. Like you can't at all. So it's just important to keep the dry wet pretty low. Um and then after that I have this reverb which is set like this. Just gives it a bit more space. Um you can hear it's kinda dark, and I like that. It's because the sound doesn't have a lot of highs. But yeah, this is just accentuating the echo. Here's without it just adds a little bit more space um and then after that i just have a side chain so it's just being side chained to the kick and then um this eq8 cutting out the low end so yeah pretty straightforward there like i said if you write it while you're listening to like your main chords you shouldn't have too much of a problem um so that's gonna be it for this video guys like i said you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description either on my band camp or on my patreon if you're a patron um, thank you again, everybody. Make sure to check out my social media, which is on the screen right now. Um, and yeah, like I said, thank you again, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another tutorial.